Hi, everybody. I enabled the chat feature. So if you have any questions, just drop something in the chat and I will be sure to check that chat stream and respond to your questions as we so tonight. Um, it is 7.58. We will start our lesson at the top of the hour. So go grab something to drink, run to the bathroom, and we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. So if you want to tell me your name and uh, tell me where you're from, you can drop that information in the chat so that I know who's joining us tonight. We are starting our very first live Zoom lesson to make a summer sampler. So we're going to be doing this every Sunday night for the next 12 weeks so that you can finish a sampler quilt just in time for summer. So if you will, go ahead and drop your name and let me know who you are. Hi, Chris from Iowa. Hi, Chris. My name's Yvonne and I'm in Kentucky. I'm in Georgetown, Kentucky tonight. Who else is with us out there? Why don't you drop your name in the chat and tell me where you're from? So we have Sonia from Michigan. Hi, Sonia. We have Ruth from Nebraska. Hi, Ruth. Welcome to our, lives, our, our live uh, lesson on YouTube. This is my first time, so I'm pretty excited. I've been quilting for about 35 years, so this is uh, a lot of fun. I hope you are loving quilting as much as I'm loving quilting, and so it is almost time for us to get started. Hi from Corinth. Hi, Joyce. Joyce is in the Jelly Roll Club. She's a friend of mine, and she is online tonight. Hi, Joyce. I hope you're doing all right. We have Robin from Maryland. Hi, Robin. If you would like to tell me how long you've been quilting, go ahead and drop that in the chat. And that will help me to guide this lesson. So if you will drop in the chat and tell me how long you've been quilting, that will help me to know who's out there in the audience tonight. A big shout out to my friend, Joyce. I miss you, Joyce. All right, friends, I believe in being on time. Um, I was in the military, so I believe that being on time means you are early. And if you are on time, you're late. So here we go. All right, it is 8 p.m. And let's talk about our project. So first, I'm going to go through the materials that you're going to need for this project. So the first thing that you're going to need for this project is uh, one jelly roll. So one entire printed jelly roll would be great for this project um, because it gives you a variety. This one is called Darlene's Favorites. And uh, so I love these little prints from the 1930s, these reproduction prints. I also have a second jelly roll because one jelly roll is not enough. It's like potato chips. So I have B Basics by Riley Blake. And so I'm going to be using um, two jelly rolls so that I have more of a variety for my quilt. You're also going to need for your quilt some background strips. And I just used yardage for mine. Uh, because I feel like it saves money. And so I have a stack of strips that are two and a half inches wide by width of fabric. So if you have um, three strips tonight, that's all you're going to need. So you'll need one strip of background. And it's a full strip by width of, uh, width of fabric. So I'm going to pull one of these out. So you're just going to need one strip that's two and a half inches by approximately 42 for your background. And you're also going to need uh, a printed strip. So first thing is first, you got to open that jelly roll. And I hate to unwrap my jelly rolls because I love to see them sitting on my shelf like this. But if you're working with jelly rolls for the first time, always have one of these things handy. And take this and remove the lint off the ends before you open it. Look at that. When you take your jelly roll and you remove all that stuff, you don't end up looking like breaded chicken. So get your jelly roll handy, pull that paper off and see what it looks like underneath. 
So let's take a look. Ooh, I love opening a jelly roll. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna unwrap that delightful jelly roll and look what we have. All right. Lots of beautiful, beautiful little uh, prints. Aren't these sweet? This quilt is going to be for my granddaughter, so this is very, very cute for a little girl. So let's see who has joined us. I have a bunch of friends online. We've got 15 people right now. I see Anita. I see Sonia, Lolita, Joyce. I see Chris Hunter, who said she's been quilting for six months and working on a double wedding ring with us. We have people from New Orleans, South Carolina. We have Northern Ontario, all kinds of uh, places. So welcome, this is our first uh, live lesson for the summer sampler. Okay, so you should have one printed jelly roll strip and one background strip. And then I want you to pick a uh, strip for the outside. So let's review uh, the block that we're gonna make tonight. So let me give you a little bit of background. So I've been sewing for 35 years. Quilting is my obsession. It's not just my passion. It's what I do every single day for fun. Well, let's see who else has joined us. We have Doreen from Oklahoma. We have Carol Harris from Canada. Hi. So uh, she says a 20 count strip jelly roll print is enough. Your jelly roll looks bigger. My jelly roll, uh, the typical jelly roll that you get um, from Moda, or from Riley Blake or from Robert Kaufman usually have 42 strips. And so we're not going to use the entire jelly roll. So if you don't have enough, don't panic. You can go out and buy a, a little bit of a fabric, a quarter yard here and there, and you can supplement. So if you only have a 20 count jelly roll, that's okay. You can add a little bit of fabric later. I have lots of jelly roll strips because that's what I love. Okay, so let's go over the block. So tonight is block one. And let me tell you a little uh, a little story about how all of this got started. So I'm gonna rotate my camera downward and I'm gonna show you some of the things that are on my table. Okay, so look what I have here. I have this delightful book that's called 5,500 Quilt Block Designs. And I got this at a yard sale for like $2. And uh, whoever wanted to get rid of this book didn't know what they were missing because this book is a beautiful, beautiful book that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of quilt blocks. No patterns, just pictures. And it has the names of all of these 5,500 blocks. So because this book uh, only had pictures, I decided that I wanted to teach myself how to learn to use a grid method for creating block patterns. So what I did is I searched the internet and I found that in 2004, a gentleman fell in love with a quilter and he made a uh, program called Pearl. And he used this program called Pearl to make her 72 quilt block designs. Now, this is the best thing that I could find online on this program that he used, but he used this program to make all these little tiny thumbnail prints of quilt blocks and she actually made a quilt for him and they ended up getting married. So that's just a lovely story about Pearl, the design program. So it's if you're not super computer savvy, you're like, what am I going to do with all those little blocks? So in this series, I'm going to show you how to take a couple of jelly roll strips and a tiny ruler and make an infinite number of blocks and you will never have to buy another pattern again for a 12 inch block. You can literally make hundreds of blocks with what I'm gonna show you tonight. And so you're gonna be like, wow, where's this been all my life? Okay, so tonight we're gonna start with block one and it looks just like this. So if you've gone to the website, you have seen what this block looks like. So I'm gonna rotate my camera so you can see what we're gonna do. So you're gonna go ahead and grab this image if you have it printed, if not, don't panic. And this is what you've got. So this is our block tonight. In order to create this block, you're gonna need a small square ruler of any type. Um, it doesn't have to be a fancy name brand. I have a little Omni Grid here. You can also use maybe a three inch one, a two inch one. It's not uh, that, 
picky. So you can use one that's like this, that's maybe five or six inches. You just don't want one that's too big. Um, for this particular block, I'm gonna use this little three and a half inch square ruler. The only thing that I'm looking for is that it has a diagonal line. And so this is gonna be important for all of our blocks. Okay, so let's look at the block. This block has two components. It has the inner block that's on the inside. And if you are wanting to make your blocks with uh, plain sashing, you don't have to worry about this outer one. So we're gonna start with this inside part first. And I'm gonna show you how we break down this block. So this block could be made with long pieces. It could be made with inset pieces, but I'm gonna show you how to make this block the easiest way possible. So I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm gonna show you how to break this block down into subsets that are super easy. So I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna draw a line, and all of a sudden I have one, two, three, four half square triangles. So I was able to break that down to four half square triangles. So let's look at what we have in this middle row. If I take this line right here and I line it up and I draw a line on my block, I have, again, one, two, three, four half square triangles. I lay this over here. I can see that I have one, two, three, four half square triangles. So if you look at this block and you break it into its subsets, it's actually on a grid that has one, two, three, four half square triangles this way and one, two, three, four half square triangles vertically. Okay, I'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes to get your jelly roll strips. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna sew our strips. All right, everybody, so you've seen the block. Uh, this is a traditional block and it's called four ships. So if you look at this block, it has these four little triangles on the corners and then this big diamond in the center. So these are supposed to be called four ships. And this is a very, very old block. It's been seen in quilts all going all the way back to the Civil War. OK, so I'm going to set that aside because I'm not going to need that right now. I'm going to get two strips. So I want to play around with my strips and I think I'm going to pick two colors that coordinate very well together. So I'm gonna pick this yellow and this green. I'm gonna save this green for my outside border. And then I'm gonna use this for the inside of my block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna take both of these strips that are full size strips and I'm gonna put them right sides together, just like this. The entire length of that strip, and it's quite long. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of that. Yes, you heard that correctly. You're gonna encase that and you're gonna sew one quarter of an inch on either side. So you wanna use a regular quarter or a scant quarter it doesn't matter. So let me go ahead and do that. So why don't you grab a couple of your strips and head over to your sewing machine and I want you to sew a quarter of an inch seam on either side and let me show you. So let me go ahead and sew that for you. For those of you who are wondering what machine I use, um, this is a uh, very inexpensive semi-industrial Brother PQ 1500 SL. I love this machine, it sews very fast. So I'm gonna zip right along. I just can't tell you how easy this is gonna be. This is a great technique to learn as a new sewer. 
a new quilter. This is a great technique to learn if you've been quilting for a long time. You're not going to have to buy uh, patterns anymore. Oh, and look at that. Bobbin thread. Time to replace my bobbin. Don't you know. All right, friends. I always keep bobbins handy. I'm going to pop another bobbin in there. Thread that. What is that law? If something can go wrong, it will. This is tonight. All right. While I am threading my machine, I hope that you are sewing your strips a quarter inch on each side. Don't you guys just love that when you're in the middle of sewing and your thread breaks? Your machine acts wonky. And you're just trying to sew. All right. Thank goodness I have my glasses on. All right, we're going to be back in business in just a second, friends. And back to where we were, zipping right along. I'm using a gray thread. Um, I usually don't switch threads around in my machine. I tend to use either gray, white, or black. Um, that coordinates or blends with most fabrics. And so that's what I use. There we go. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. When you get to the end of your strip, you're not going to break your thread at all. You're simply going to, and let me see if you can see what I've got here. Let me turn this down. You're simply going to get to the end of your strip. You're going to pull your strip. And then you're going to rotate that strip, and without even breaking your thread, you're going to start sewing on the other side. How's it going out there? Do you have your strips? Are you ready to sew as well? And so I'm going to sew down the other side. you this technique here is very forgiving it doesn't matter if your quarter inch is accurate as long as your quarter inch is straight you're good to go so we're getting to the end of this here all right All right, friends, we are at the end of this sewing part, and you're going to see how quick and easy this is. All right, so I have my strip, and I have sewn one-fourth of an inch on either side. If you want to let me know uh, when you're ready, I will continue with the next step. 
what kind of thread do I use? I like to use the Guterman thread, uh, 100% cotton. I do not use polyester, but it comes in a cone, as you can see. I have it right here. And so um, Guterman is, is a good piecing thread. I also like Aurifil. Um, both of those are high quality, 100% cotton threads, and those are my favorite threads. Paula's Law. All right. All right, friends. I will uh, move on to the next step when you let me know that you are ready. So if you will drop that in the chat and say, Yvonne, I am ready, then we can move on to the next part. I see that Anita is ready. I see that Carol is ready. You just let me know and we will move on to the easy peasy cutting portion of this lesson. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, my philosophy on quilting. Quilting is something that was really popular in the U.S. in the 1930s because we all know that in that time period, we were going through the Great Depression in the United States. And so quilting used to be something that people did in order to be frugal. But somehow in modern times, it seems like every time I turn around, people are wanting me to buy things and spend my money. And uh, I'm a penny pincher. So I'm going to show you ways to save money. And so every time that I do a video lesson, I'm going to show you ways to uh, learn how to quilt free, easy, and cheap. Um, that's me, free, easy, and cheap. So that's how we're going to learn how to sew. All right. I see that most of you guys are looking like you're ready. So I'm going to move this out of my way and I'm going to show you guys how to cut uh, the center part of this block out. Okay. So let's move on down. All right, friends. Move this book out of my way and let me show you. So I'm going to have to bring this down and zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So one of the reasons that I stitched tonight using a darker gray thread, normally I would use a lighter gray, is because I wanted you to see my stitch line. And look, there's a boo-boo. It doesn't even matter. Okay. So you're going to lay your strip. You can even fold it in half, but I'm just going to do single. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this one. It doesn't matter which side you cut from, and you're going to lay it like this. Now you're going to find your ruler and you're going to look at the ruler like this. This one has a 45 degree line. This right here is a 90 degree right triangle, but this right here is your 45 degree line. You're going to take that 45 degree line, you're going to rotate that ruler like this, and you're going to drop it right on that stitching line. Look at that. And so my three and a half inch ruler fits just nice on there. And I'm going to take my nice sharp rotary cutter and I'm going to cut on both sides of that triangle like this, that square. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to cut on both sides of that. So I'm going to slide it down just a hair. And I'm going to cut like this. So now that I have this cut, and this is one of my cuts, right? I'm going to lay this over here to where I can see it and it's more manageable. And I'm going to lay that 45 uh, degree line right on the stitch line. And I'm going to br bring my ruler over until the tip of my ruler lines up with this stitch line right here. And when I take that and I cut it, just like this, what it's going to give me when I open that is a half square triangle. Voila. And so look at that half square triangle. Um, of course, I have little bunny ears, so I'm going to cut those off just like this because I don't want those to get in the way. And I'm going to press that and I'm going to measure. So I'm going to take my little pressing mat that I have right beside me. And I'm going to give that a little tiny press. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to press to the dark side. So I'm going to set that seam. And look at my poor little baby iron. I've had that a long time. And then I'm going to just gently push that over so that I don't distort my block. And I'm going to let that seam go to the dark side. And so I'm going to flip this over. 
Don't worry if you don't have a bunch of expensive quilting tools. You don't have to to participate in this project. So look at there. We're going to save that for later because I don't like wasting fabric. So there we go. So now we have one little half square triangle. Look at that. And so that's how easy it is to make a half square triangle. Some people will have you cut a square that's three quarters of an inch bigger, draw a line, so a quarter inch on either side. You don't have to do any of that to make half square triangles. You can do this with all size strips and make half square triangles as small as one inch and as large as 20 inches if that's what you wanna do. This is an easy peasy technique. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now I'm gonna show you how to cut the rest of my strips. So I have this strip now that has this weird little angle. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it up with this edge right here along this side and the tip of my ruler over here at the top of that spot where there is a stitch line. Do you guys see that? So I'm gonna line up my ruler so that this 45 degree line is parallel to that stitch line. And then this meets right there at that stitch line. And then once I have it exactly where I want it, I'm just gonna lay it right here so that it faces me. I'm gonna cut away from myself so I don't injure myself. So I don't think you want me to bleed to death. And I'm gonna do the same thing over and over again until I'm gonna lay this right here carefully until I get all the way to the end of my strip. And I should have 16, if you notice the tip of my ruler is right there at that stitch line, I should have 16 half square triangles from my two strips. And so that's what I should have. If you have less than 16, then maybe your jelly roll strips are not a full width of fabric, but mine are. And so this one, you just get it to where you're cutting away from yourself and not uh, towards you, because you never want to injure yourself. And so make sure that you're lining that tip. If you can see from that angle, I'm going to go ahead and just cut. And these should be parallel. That 45 degree line should be parallel. I'm just going to rotate this around, making sure that each time I check to make sure that I'm not getting too off kilter. And so there they are. I'm getting a nice little pile right in front of me. Look at those. Some of these even have their little dog ears already nipped off. And so I'm just going to keep going. Rotating this, you can rotate this up and down and up and down. Um, but either way, you can have one of those little handy dandy rotating mats if you want. You can also, if you want to be a little bit more accurate, doesn't really matter. You can line that up with the stitch line like this and then just slide it over until the edge of your ruler touches that tip. And so there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm a cat lady, so I ought to know. And you can trim that off. And you're just going to keep going until you finish this. And so I'm going to lay this over here carefully doing that back and forth until I get to the end of my strip. How are you guys doing? If you don't have a three and a half inch square ruler, you can use any ruler you've got handy. Um, let me show you how to cut this maybe with a different size ruler. So let's say that you have a ruler that looks like this. So that was Chris Hunter. Um, and so she said that she does not have uh, a square ruler. And so all uh, rulers have a 45 degree line and this one is marked. So if you look at that one, it says 45 degrees, I can do the same thing. I can lay that right on that stitch line. I can slide this one over until I get to the stitching right here. And now I can just simply take and I can cut this right here. Um, you can find all of the patterns for these blocks on the website. So this is the block that we're building tonight. And you can find all of these images on www.jellyrollclub.com. And that's our official club website. So that's our official club website. 
So you continue doing that with the rest of your um, strip. And like I said, you can do that with a, a rectangular ruler. You can do that with a square ruler. You can even do that with uh, a different kind of ruler. I found this one at Joann's for like $3 with a coupon. So this is like a little mini companion angle. Do you guys see that? It's like a little mini companion angle and you can use something like this. So quilting doesn't have to be expensive. You can lay this one right here too if you wanted to. Lay that right there, lay that on the stitch line and I could take a little whack and cut this one as well. So this little mini companion angle. So if you have a larger ruler that's called a companion angle, you can also use this for the same purpose. You're just cutting those and making a little stack. This is very relaxing. I can tell you that this is one of my favorite things to do because it's so incredibly relaxing. All right, does anybody have any questions? You can drop your questions in the chat as I cut. I will monitor the chat. All right, so let me keep cutting. I have somebody that said, I just got my strip sewn. Where do I uh, lay the ruler to cut? Okay, so I'm gonna show you on this end. And to cut this particular block, so I'm gonna repeat that again. You're going to take your uh, 45 degree line on your ruler and you're going to lay it right here and you're going to make your first cut. You can slide it all the way until you get to the end and then you're going to cut from stitch line to stitch line like this or you can lay it over here and make your first cut. I always have like a little nibble I leave at the end, but you're just going to take and line that up at 45 degree with either the bottom or the stitch line, and then you are gonna make that first cut. You're just trying to get that first 45 degree angle so that you can use that as a reference to cut the rest of your strips. And you literally just keep going without stopping. Each one of these is the same. You take that ruler, you make sure that this is parallel to your stitch line. I always, uh, face it away from me like this. It just makes it easier to cut. Now I want to make sure that I'm looking at that and then I slide that ruler. Can you guys see me? Can you guys see my hands? I slide that ruler to where it's the edge of that ruler is touching the top of that. You can also line it up with a bottom. Either way, it doesn't matter. What you're trying to get is this 45 degree angle and you want the top of that ruler to just barely graze that stitch line on the opposite side and then you're cutting that. This is kind of like um, riding a bike. Once you learn how to do it, it's not too bad. Um, getting the hang of it at first is a little bit easy and so then when I cut the opposite direction, I'm just going to lay it this way and again, I'm going to take this 45 degree line and I'm going to line it up so that the edge of my ruler is right there and that I have a nice line that is straight on this side along that 45 so that when I cut those pieces, I know that this is exactly 45 degrees. A ruler like this is super inexpensive. You could probably get it for uh, less than $5 if you use a coupon. You can find them anywhere, Walmart, Amazon, Joann's, your local quilt shop will have a small ruler. Um, don't invest a million dollars, but little small rulers like this are super handy when you are sewing. I use my little rulers all the time when I'm quilting. Does anybody else have any questions while we're here? Tell me where you're from if you joined us late. We are working on the half square triangle pieces for the inside of our block. And so this is the block that we are working on tonight. It has a total of 16 half square triangles and I am showing you how to do that lickety split. It won't take you any time flat. Most of these blocks will take us about an hour to make. So this is not a quilt that's gonna require a huge investment in time. Some quilts are very involved, this one is not. So this is a great quilt for beginners, for people who are new, um, this allows you to practice your skills. And so I'm just gonna cut, cut, cut away. 
without even stopping. Rotate my ruler. This is a this is better than therapy, to be honest. Quilting is cheaper than therapy. It's cheaper than wine, and it's less damaging to the body. Although I do enjoy a glass of wine every now and again, just not every day. But, uh, yep, yeah, just using that edge of that ruler, again, laying it right there, lining it up so that I'm getting that good 45-degree angle. Look, I'm almost at the bottom of my strip. And we're going to have two little pieces at the end left over. So there's very little waste. There's almost zero waste in this quilt. Okay. So now that you have your strip set, and you're just going to cut the entire thing. In this particular block, you're only using one color for the inside, so it doesn't matter. And this last one, we're gonna try to squeeze one more out of there to make sure that we can get one more block. And as you can see, I should have just this little uh, leftover bit at the end. So this is all that's left. This is my scrap and I should have one scrap of these for each end. And when you are done, you can trim this up and you can take the one from the other end and you can actually make yourself a little tiny hourglass block. So don't waste that because later on, uh, we're gonna use this in another one of our blocks. So save these little guys and that way you're wasting nothing. Does anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? Anybody have any questions, right? You can drop them in the chat if you have questions. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I got 20 half square triangles out of that uh, strip of background and that strip of printed fabric. I'm only going to use 16 of these because I'm doing a four by four grid. So I will save the other ones and I'll set them aside because I can use them in some of my other blocks. Does anybody have any questions so far? Tell me where you're from. Let's see. I see Chris Hunter. I see Ruth, Carol, Anita. I see Lily. Who else is out there? I see Carolyn. I see Doreen. Welcome to the Jelly Roll Club. This is my uh, fun time. I love to sew. I love to quilt. And I love to help other people on the same journey. All right. So now that we have all of our little half square triangles, and look at how many we made in literally just 15 minutes. So now I'm going to take these and I'm going to press them all to the dark and then I'm gonna square them up. So that's our next step. All right, friends, grab your iron, grab your little pressing mat. I got this as a present, my little wool pressing mat. I love this so much. And now I'm gonna take these little guys and I'm just gonna lay them here and I'm gonna put them with dark side up and I'm just gonna make a whole stack of these because I'm gonna press them open. And so I'm just gonna Stick them here just like this. And I'm gonna press and set all of the seams at one time because this is assembly line sewing. So I'm gonna grab all of these little friends. I'm gonna lay them in a row. Now I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna press, press, press them flat and set all of those seams at one time. Yes, friends, this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Look at that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I need eight more because we need 16 for this block. So I'm going to set those there and let them cool for a second. Then I need eight more. So I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
All right, so I have my other eight and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give them all a press at one time. You don't have to be too finicky because you're gonna press this again. So mainly we're just trying to get them good and flat and set those seams. When you use hot uh, and hot iron and I do not use steam in any way, shape or form, uh, all you're doing is taking those stitches and shrinking them so that it locks that uh, stitch in place and your blocks uh, look nicer. So I'm gonna take these now and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press them all to the dark side. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull one forward. And the reason I put the dark side to the top is because I'm simply gonna lift that up and press the iron and leave the iron on there for a second. And I just leave a little bit of pressure, not a lot. I don't do this. I don't do a huge scrubbing motion. That iron has a very light touch. And so I'm gonna set that aside and I'm just gonna do that lickety split to all of my blocks. I'm just gonna set it there for a second. I'll grab the next one in line and flip it up and then set it down and put the iron on top of it. And so what I'm doing is literally just pressing those open so that I can square them up because that is our next step. I'm just gonna take them and I've got a nice little stack going here. I'm just gonna set them aside. And in this project, you're gonna save every little scrap because at the end, I'm gonna show you how to make bonus blocks or filler blocks or even mug rugs that we can use with all of those little leftovers. So if you have a project that requires you to make a ton of half square triangles, there's several patterns out there by CAFE that literally require hundreds of half square triangles. This is a great technique to use. Like I said, if you use a bigger ruler, you can do this with any size strip that you want. And so you're just gonna take all of those little half square triangles, you're just gonna stack them up. Just takes but a minute to get all of this done. When I push, when I use an iron, this is a itty bitty little lightweight travel iron. You see how yellow it is? It's been everywhere. I've used it for at least a decade. I don't have an expensive iron. I don't need it. I'm just gonna use that little iron and it, it's very lightweight. So it doesn't put a bunch of pressure. It has little steam holes, but I don't use steam. I just use a very hot dry iron and that distorts my blocks a whole lot less and then they fit better. And look at how uh, precise those little blocks are. Those are not, uh, those are not uh, deformed little blocks. Those are nice. Does anybody have any questions out there? So am I a steamer? Somebody asked, Lily did. No, Lily, I am not a steamer. Uh, I think that adding too much steam to 100% cotton fabric tends to shrink and distort your blocks. I, I get a lot of distortion. And so I try to use just as hot of an iron as I can get, which is why my little iron is yellow. And uh, I just use hot dry iron for 90% of my stuff. Now there are some patterns that yes, steam is necessary, but for the most part, um, I do not use steam, just a hot dry iron. Does anybody else have any questions out there? Anybody else have any questions that I could answer for you? And I'm going very fast, but don't worry. I will uh, leave this video on the YouTube channel so that you can come back and watch it later if you want. Um, if you have questions after this live class, I will have a Zoom session and I will post that Zoom link on our uh, Jelly Roll Club website. So if you are not a member of the Jelly Roll Club. It's always free and always fun. And we have a Facebook page and it's uh, at Jelly Roll Club, just one word. And then my email is Yvonne, I-V-O-N-N-E -N -N -E, at jellyrollclub.com. So if you wanna send me an email or you have questions um, or you wanna know more about what we do, you just let me know. We have a calendar on our website. So if you want to know uh, where I'm going to be on a given day, am I Zooming? Am I doing classes? You can find those on the little jellyrollclub.com calendar. So there we go. So now I have my 16 
little half square triangles in no time flat. So I'm gonna move my wool pressing mat and now I'm gonna square those up. Okay, so let's look at the block. Here's our block again. Our block is four half square triangles across by four high, so it is 16. This inner block right here will measure eight and a half inches because when you take a two and a half inch block and you join it together, they end up being two inches finished. So this will be two, four, six, eight. You add those outside seam allowances. When I finish this inner portion, it should measure eight and a half inches. You're also going to want to cut an eight and a half inch strip for the top and an eight and a half inch strip from the bottom, and then two 12 and a half inch strips for either side. But now for our next step to build this inside, we're going to have to take and square up these little blocks we just made. Now you can square these up a variety of ways. You can buy one of these uh, little two and a half inch rulers by Creative Grids. You can use a bigger ruler like this one. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you can find a two and a half inch line on your um, ruler, that works fine. So I'm going to use this little square up block just because it's easy. I can lay that little middle uh, line right on the stitch line and I can trim that away. I can slide this to the bottom and that looks good and straight. And I'm just gonna zip two little corners off of each one of my blocks and get ready to join them. Now, if you want to measure these and you do not, and that's your choice, if you do not wanna put this outer uh, sashing on yours and you just wanna make the blocks because you wanna do the same sashing on all of them, you can actually just measure these and leave them all the same size. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure to see how big mine turned out. They should be close to three inches, so let's see. And look at there, it's really close to three inches right there. It's about two and three quarters. So I'm gonna make these all two and a half inches and I'm gonna keep going. And the reason they are not three inches is because I have a big fat quarter instead of a scant quarter. So is the finished square size three inches? The current one that I have is three inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim these to two and a half because if you want all of these to be the same size, you want these all to be two and a half inches. So I'm gonna square mine up to two and a half inches and that's what I want you to do as well. And that will make a block that finishes, this block will finish 12 and a half inches, okay? So go ahead and grab any ruler that you have that will allow you to trim these up. I'm going to use this little guy. I'm going to lay this here, and I'm going to trim mine on two sides. So I'm going to zippity doo -dah one side, zippity doo -dah the other, and this one is ready. And if somebody saw me leaving that open, they'd get mad. So I have my two-and-a-half-inch half-square half square triangle, and it's ready to go. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna trim that little bunny ear off because they get on my nerves. And then I'm gonna take this, lay it exactly on that diagonal at 45 degree right there, lays exactly on the diagonal and I'm gonna trim off that little excess I have. I don't need that. This gives me perfect two and a half inch squares. I know that they are all perfectly two and a half inch this way and I will start building my block. And I'm gonna lay this here, and I know that mine have to go, this one will go with the print to the inside. This one will go with the white, like this, and so I'm building my first row. And I'm gonna leave that there so you can see that. So your first row across the top is going to be like this. So I will lay that there. And I will continue trimming. I want you to continue trimming yours. Go ahead and make them two and a half inches so that your blocks will finish the same size as my blocks. What size is this quilt gonna be? This quilt is gonna be whatever size you want it to be. 
And as we go through each week and make all of our sampler blocks, I will give you dimensions for different size quilts and different layouts. So if you go to the website and you go to www.jellyrollclub.com, you're going to see some inspiration quilts and you're also going to see some ideas for layouts. And so you get to design your own quilt. And there you go. So now I'm starting to build my top row. So my top row has my color going down. This one is also going down in the same direction. And then this picks up and it goes in the opposite direction. So it looks like a little flying geese in the middle with two triangles on each side. Does anybody else have any questions? How are you doing out there? Tell me something funny. What's happening out there in the quilting world? All right, friends. So this should now be row number one. So row number one looks like this. Let me know when you are ready for me to do row number two. And you're gonna take these and you're gonna flip these over just like this. And then you're gonna take this over and flip it just like this. And you are gonna sew a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on this side, okay? So I will lay this here so that you can see that while I am sewing these two. So let me go over to the machine really quick and sew these while you continue trimming and getting your half square triangles pressed up. All right, friends, I have these two together. And yes, they should look like that. If you have a quarter inch seam, they should look like that. Now I'm gonna press these all in one direction. Then the next row, the second row, will get pressed in this direction. Then the third row will get pressed in that direction. And then the final one will get pressed in this direction. And that will ensure that all of your seams nest. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna sew the next piece that goes in the top row. And just be sure that your pieces, you are laying them out and you're matching them so that they are going in the right direction. There's nothing more tragic for me than when I have to use Jack the Ripper, the seam ripper. He is not my friend and I don't like him. So I try to just take my time and sew carefully so that I can uh, avoid using Jack the Ripper, the seam ripper. Anybody else have a love-hate relationship with their, uh, with their seam ripper? So I have these two pieces. I'm gonna open that. I'm not pressing anything yet until I finish the entire row. So once I have that row and I know that it's correct because I'm looking at it against this uh, image that I have here, I'm going to take these two together over to the machine. And again, I'm going to sew them with a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to press them. If you have never visited uh, Georgetown, Kentucky, we live in a very, very beautiful area in central Kentucky. Georgetown is uh, in basically horse country. The horse capital of the world is Lexington. And we also have a beautiful facility called the Horse Park. So if you love horses, you would love uh, coming to Georgetown. So if you ever get a chance, Come visit us. We would love to have you. We are very friendly here in Georgetown. Okay, so there we go. This is the first row, right? Let me show you how it looks right here on the pattern. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like in real life. So I have my thing and I'm gonna 
choose. It doesn't matter. These can all go this way or these can all go this way. The only thing that matters is that they all go in the same direction. And yes, that looks kind of cattywampus, but that's your quarter inch seam. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to make sure that all of these just go the direction they want to go. And I'm going to carefully hold my iron down. I'm not distorting anything. I'm just going to hold it with my hand. I do not open my seams. I do not open my seams. When you are quilting, if you can avoid opening your seams, unless it's absolutely necessary, don't do that. Sew with your seams to one side because as your quilt wears and is used, when you open those, when you fillet those seams open, the only thing that you have left, so I'm gonna carefully open this seam and I want you to look at it. When I open this, if I were to press it flat, and if I had a doggy or a kitty or a grandson or anybody sit on that quilt, look at the only thing that you have is just a few pieces of thread there. But if that is laying flat and then this is put on a backing and then you quilt over that, what that does is it strengthens that seam so that your quilts don't break at the seam. And you see that in quilts uh, that have been used and well loved that over time when people um, open, press those seams open, those seams, uh, those seams will last a whole lot longer. And quilting is something that you want your quilts to last. So if you want an heirloom quilt, use high quality cottons and make sure that if you can, you are pressing those seams just to one side. I would love to host a Jelly Roll Club party as soon as this pandemic is over. I think that we should have a great big giant quilting party at Birdsong, our local quilt shop. Okay, and that's what it looks like. This is nice and even. Those seams are laid nice and flat. So as you can see, now I am ready for line number two. So there's my first one, right? So the first part of the block, these are the first four. You have this in two places on this, on this quilt. So if you look at this block, you have this row up here and you have the same exact row down here at the bottom. And I keep getting a reminder on my computer. I don't know what I'm getting a reminder about. So once we get out of lockdown, I think we should have a party. Okay, there you go. So you have this row is the same as the other row. So you have two rows that are the same. And I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna mark it so you can see. So if you look at that right there and I lay it down, this is exactly what I have right here. I have this thing that looks like a flying geese and then the two ones on the corner, the yellow Sharpie. I'm gonna run that line there so you can see it. So there you go. So we have one at the top, one at the bottom. Now we have two rows in the middle, which are identical. So I'm gonna build uh, that middle row. And so I'm gonna move this out of my way. And I will go ahead and I will square up another set of half square triangles. And so I'm going to lay this over here on top of my pattern for you to look at. And while I'm doing that, you should also be squaring up a few more of your half square triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to set it aside. Can you guys still see that? I don't want to take it off the screen. That way you can follow along. And I am sorry if I'm moving kind of fast. If you think I'm going too fast, please tell me to slow down in the chat and I will slow down. Just say, hey, can you please show something again? I would be glad to repeat it. The purpose of this live uh, lesson is for you to have access to me and be able to ask me whatever you want to ask me. Love, 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 love quilting. I do. I love it. Anybody have any questions for me? So I'm doing four more, zippity doo doesn't take any time at all, I've got one. If you press them all at the same time, it makes it super easy. And this is, squaring up your blocks is a great way to get extremely accurate, accurate squares. Our local quilt shop is called Birdsong Quilting. We have a lovely quilt shop. Um, it is owned by a nice lady. Her name is Shannon. 
and she indulges me in all of my um, crazy ideas for quilt classes. And so we have monthly quilt classes. So if you're ever in the Georgetown area, please stop by the first Saturday of the month. We have in-person Jelly Roll Club during that time. And the members of the Jelly Roll Club pick the project that we do together. And then I'm just the facilitator. I work on uh, whatever the members of the club want to work on, and I will create patterns and create handouts. So if you have any ideas for what we should be doing with the Jelly Roll Club, you let me know. I love making my quilts out of simply jelly rolls. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of quilts that you can make that literally only take jelly roll strips. So, all right, so there's my next four. I have my next four trimmed up. So Lily said, uh, if she ever gets off lockdown, she would love to come. Well, Lily, we would love to have you. If we ever get off lockdown, Listen, if we ever get on lockdown, they're going to have to tie me down because I'm going to be everywhere. I'm going to be asking Joyce to go out to eat. I'm going to hang out with Pam. We're going to drive with Lynn and take a road trip to all the quilt shops in Central Kentucky. We're going to go somewhere. I'm not staying locked up forever. I can tell you that. All right. So this is what we've got going on here. All right, friends. So now I have row one and I'm ready for row two. So I'm going to go ahead and this middle row right here, I'm just going to block it off so you can see what I'm working on. This middle row takes one half square triangle that has the gold to the inside. It has the gold this direction. So oops, angly challenge there. So it goes that way. And then it has a mirror image on the other side. So it has the white to the inside. And then it has the yellow to the inside. So this is what your second row looks like. So your second row looks like this, and that's what builds this angle right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna lay that on top. Take, and I'm gonna lay that on top. And I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on either side. Joyce said she's ready, girlfriend. Um, one of my favorite things to do in Georgetown is go to a place called Galvin's. They have the best club sandwiches. Um, I believe that every meal should include bacon. And they have delicious club sandwiches. They also have bacon cheddar french fries. So these french fries have a massive amount of cheese on them. And they also have gobs of bacon. So that's one of my favorite things to eat. And when we are ready and we don't have to wear masks and sit like 20 feet apart and all that good stuff, I'm going to go have uh, cheddar fries with Joyce. Be careful when you're sewing these. Make sure you are sewing them in the correct direction. I am getting super excited, people, because my youngest daughter is in her final year of college. Uh, do I pin? No, I do not pin. I do not pin until I get to the end because I can actually feel it. And what I'm going to do here in a second, I'm going to show you. So this goes open now. I'm an anti-pinner. I'm in the anti-pinning league. Um, those of you who have known me for a while know that as long as you have a consistent and accurate quarter inch seam, you actually don't even need to pin. So there you go. So this is what it should look like. And yes, you should have a quarter of an inch on either side looking offset, looking wonky like that. That is correct. So now I'm going to take this and lay that on top. I am in the no pin brigade and I'm going to take that over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on that side. And I'm going to pull my pattern up just a hair so that you can see what I'm working on. So this is the row we're working on now. And so Doreen said, do you pin? No pin. No pin for me.
There are some quilt patterns that do require pinning because sewing them without pins would be a nightmare. If you're ever making a traditional uh, double wedding ring and you're sewing lots of curves, you're gonna wanna pin those blocks. And that's one of the few patterns. For those of you who like to torture yourself like I do with very difficult patterns, we've all been working on a double wedding ring. So if you wanna jump in, just let me know. Okay, so there's my next row. So now I'm gonna press it and I'm gonna look at this particular row right here. And I notice that this whole row, I've got to decide which way this goes. So this goes down. So I'm going to have to put it like this because when I sew it together, it's going to be like this and like this, right? So it's going to form this part of the triangle. And so in order for me to know what side to press it to, I'm going to lay it on top. And if you notice, all of these are going to my right. And so that means that all of these on top are gonna go to the left. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy pressing board and I'm gonna lay this right on top like this and I'm gonna press all of those straight down going to the left. And I'm just gonna squish it with my finger for a second and then I'm barely laying that iron on there. Try not to stretch too much. The more you stretch, the more these little blocks end up distorted. But I'm just laying my iron very lightly. I'm not pushing down one way or another, just light pressure. Over time, you will find that the, the less you fuss over your blocks, the more accurate they get. So the less you fuss over them, the better off you are. So now I can go ahead and I can take this row and I can join these two together. So now I have half of a block finished. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay this right on top. And before I sew, I'm gonna make sure that these two lock against each other. So when I'm sewing, I'm gonna sew with these seams pushed up against each other. If you feel more comfortable pinning, you can put a pin right at that intersection. So right where those two meet right there, just make sure, see right there, make sure that you are pinning seam to seam, and then you're gonna rock that pin and you're gonna lay it right there. If you're a new quilter and you're not sure of how accurate you can make this, go ahead and put a couple pins in there. You don't have to pin it to death, but make sure that these intersections meet like this. If you are a pinner, go ahead and pin. I don't like to because I stab myself with pins. You see that right there, people have a big bruise. Um, that's where I stabbed myself with a pin a few days ago. So I really don't like pinning. I'm a danger to myself and others. But see right there where you have that little crosshair? That is your quarter inch seam. The seam that comes this way should land right there. If you land this horizontal seam right at that spot, then your points are gonna match exactly. So that is your target. When you're sewing this quarter inch seam and you're coming across, and you see that little crosshairs, you wanna sew right there on that line as you come across, because that is what's gonna give you that super accurate point. You're not gonna chop anything off. But no, I don't need to pin, so I'm gonna set my pins aside and I'll be right back because I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm gonna sew them. And I'll leave that right there for you to look at for your reference, okay? Save the paper, save the planet. If you don't need to print this out, don't print it out. Because every time that we do a video lesson, I will have one printed copy in color and I will use it as a reference the entire time that we are sewing so that you don't have to use your ink and you don't have to print another piece of paper. How's everybody doing out there? You doing all right? You making progress on your block? I'm going awful fast. All right. And there we go. 
So now we have a half a block. And look at right there. Do you see where I landed? I landed right at that intersection. And so when I open that, that should be a perfect point and nothing got chopped off. And so I'm going to look at that. In this, in this particular case, once you get there, it doesn't matter which way that seam goes. That seam can go up. That seam can go down. Um, it doesn't really matter because this particular block is going to have um, a sash around it. And so it's never going to uh, butt up against another block. So I just see which direction it wants to lay and then I just press it flat. So I will get my mat and I will let it do what it wants to do. I'm gonna take and run my finger across that seam. If you find that it's too bulky and you want to press it open, that's up to you. I don't do that to mine. So I'm gonna lay that there. And I'm just gonna make sure that that seam all goes the same direction with my finger. You don't have to panic about setting your seam and doing all that stuff. Just make sure that your seams are not going every which way. Just make sure that they're all laying nice and flat. It makes it easier for whoever quilts your quilt, whether it's you or somebody else, then you don't have to worry about that. So I have a question, this is a poll. Does anybody in this group want me to demonstrate free motion quilting on a domestic machine? Because I find that that is something that most people are terrified of, but it's actually extremely easy to do. Do you guys want me to, in a future installment of Jelly Roll Live, do you want me to model free motion quilting on my domestic machine? And so I have a yes. All right, so there we go, friends. This little block is coming right along. Now I just need to do the other half of my little block. All right, and when I get to the end, then I will press it uber flat. So there we go. Now I have half of a block. And now I'm ready for the other half. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did to this. I'm gonna leave this there for you guys to look at. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim the rest of these. So I have three people so far that want me to demonstrate free motion quilting. So I will try to put that on my calendar, friends. And when I get uh, a couple of quilt blocks finished that I'm going to use as pot holders, I will show you how to do that. If you have an orphan block out there that you made but didn't make it into another project, or if you have a quilt sandwich that's maybe 20 by 20, just some muslin and some thread, that would be a great way to get started. Maybe you can buy a, a fourth of a yard or two fat quarters that you like that you want to turn into a couple of pot holders or even maybe a mug rug. That would be a great way to start on free motion quilting. So if you will gather up those materials, then I will schedule a time um, to teach you guys how to do free motion quilting because it is super easy and I love it. I feel like I, I'm attracted to things that are hard. I'm not sure. Maybe I like to try the impossible. I don't know. So I have Robin. I have Anita. I have four people so far who want to do a free motion quilting lesson. And you guys tell me what time works for you. So what day of the week works better? Is a Saturday better? Is a Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning? I'm a full-time teacher for those of you who don't know me. Um, so Saturdays are my days to sew. That's the day that my uh, husband and my children do not bother me. And so unless there's a fire or flood in my house, they leave me alone and they let me quilt. So my people are very kind to me. They don't ask me for food or water or to find their socks or where is uh, a banjo or a guitar or where did I put uh, the inflatable tent? None of that stuff because Saturdays are mama's day. And so they don't bother me. And I love that about my people. They respect my sewing time. So you guys tell me. If you are interested in free motion quilting, what day of the week works better for you, Saturday or Sunday? And do you want to do morning or afternoon? That way I know 
when to schedule it on my calendar. So you guys tell me what you want to do with that, and I will get that on the calendar. So Robin said, any, any day or time. I wish. Once I'm retired, my, my quilting schedule will be any day or time. So very soon. I've got 48 months. It'll go in the blink of an eye. I have a uh, very little time left until I'm retirement eligible, which I don't know. I may not retire. I really enjoy my job. I work with high school students. I teach Spanish, a uh, high school Spanish teacher. And uh, I kind of like my students. And I think they kind of like me, so... I like to cut my bunny ears off, so I'm moving kind of slow. I'm sorry for those of you who like to go faster, but I like to take my time when it comes to squaring them up and making them pretty. I find that in the long haul, these blocks end up looking better. So how's it going? Are you guys? <laughs> so Robin's retired. So Saturday or Sunday, said Chris. Can I make the images of the individual blocks printable? Yes, I can. I can PDF them. Chris, I can PDF all of those and I can put them in a Google Drive so that you guys can print them. And that way you guys can put them in a book. So yes, I can make any of those things printable. Those are my, uh, those are my block designs. I sketched them on, uh, on Electric Quilt 8 for those of you who use EQ. I used Electric Quilt 8 to build my blocks and create my designs and color them in. So I will make those printable for you guys. All right, so how's it going? How are we, how are we getting along here? Are you guys getting close to having everything squared up to put the next two rows together, or do you need a breather? And so somebody said, PDF, please. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And somebody said, you can just click on the pic and make it a photo and then print. Yes. You can also use an extension. So if you are a little bit computer savvy, they have a screen grab. So if you have a computer that is a Windows computer, there's something down in the bottom bar called a snipping tool. And so if you type the word snipping tool on there, um, it allows you to literally take a little set of crosshairs and snip an image on a website and you can save it and print it that way. But I will save you the trouble of having to do all of that. And so now I'm gonna build my next row. I'm gonna save you all the trouble and I will make it uh, printable for you. All right, so then here goes the next one. It's gonna go to the outside like this. So it's like a flying goose this direction. And I'm gonna take this way and lay it out and this way and lay it out. Okay, so that's the next row right there. So row number three now looks like this. And so same thing, I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and lay it down. And if you notice, I'm just building one row at a time to make sure that I am not getting confused when I am uh, putting these together and I'm going to take these to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. I like to stay organized. I like to stay organized with my projects. All right, friends, how are you doing? You doing okay? Anybody have any questions? All right. So here's my next row. Again, I'm gonna double check to make sure that those are in the correct direction. 
before I sew them together because I do not like Jack Ripper the seam ripper. He is not my friend. He is not my friend. All right. Now you notice when I get there, both of those seams are going in the same direction. Be very careful. In this case, I might pin. And the reason I would pin is to keep those two from migrating. For the most part, I don't pin. But in this case, I'm gonna pin because both of those are facing up and I don't want those seams to end up cattywampus. And so now I'm gonna sew down this side. And so there's my next row. And I'm gonna lay this down because I wanna know which direction to press. And so if you notice on this one, all of these are already pressed this direction. So that means this top one, all of my seams have to go this direction. And so I'm gonna now take this and I'm gonna take my little mat and I'm gonna lay it just this way so that I don't get confused. And I'm gonna make sure that these now all go this direction. So they're now going the opposite direction so that when I add that to my block, they all nest perfectly and don't look completely distorted. And if they're a little bit wrinkly, don't worry, you can come to the front and you can get those wrinkles out. I always press them from the back and then I come back and I press it from the top just so that my little, little blocks are nice and flat. And I try to keep it straight as well. And that tells me if I'm accurate. See there where I have a little tiny gap? That just means that when I was sewing, um, I went a little bit askew and that's okay. It's just a small amount um, and it'll be just fine. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So I know that this one now goes here and because I have ironed those seams in the opposite direction, it will save me a lot of trouble when I go to match those up. And so I will lay these here and now my seams will nest and I'll be able to sew those. So now that I see those seams, they're just nesting. And so they're gonna abut against each other. And if you notice, I'm gonna sew with this on the bottom to make sure that these go where they go. And so now I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way across and I'll be ready for my final row. And so I'm just nesting those. I hold it, I go over to the machine and see that matches on the end. That means my quarter inch seam is accurate and those are nice and straight. And I'll be right back. I'm gonna go sew that. So there you go. I'm gonna leave that up here so you can see it while I'm sewing. And I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering why this is called the summer sampler. Well, the reason why this is called the summer sampler is because if you make one quilt block every single week between now and May, you're gonna have a quilt top ready in time for summer. And so that's why it's called the summer sampler. So maybe you're gonna take this quilt uh, camping. Maybe you're gonna take this quilt on a picnic um, because hopefully all of this horrible stuff related to uh, COVID-19 will be gone by summer. 
and we will just be able to enjoy time outdoors with our family when the weather is lovely. I look so forward to the time when I can just be outside, laying under a tree, reading a book on top of one of my quilts. All right, so there we have. So now we have the next row and I'm ready to press. And if you notice, those seams are matching up quite nicely without any pins. So now I'm ready to press that. And so I'm gonna press it before I move on to the next step. And I do that at every time. So I'm just gonna set my seam to keep it from getting too cattywampus. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna press it. I can press it from the front if I want, or I can press it from the back. So I'm just gonna let the seam go wherever it wants to go and it looks like it wants to go that way. I'm just gonna leave my iron laying on there. I'm not gonna force anything. I do not wrestle with my fabric. I just let it do what it wants to do. Wrestling with fabric never turns out well. So I'm just gonna press that. Some people at this point would starch it to death. I do not believe in starching my quilts to death because unfortunately starch attracts bugs. So if you don't want silverfish and moths and other little critters attracted to your quilts, uh, if you use starch, you're going to have to wash them right away. Now, some people try to use uh, fabric sizing. That's one of the things that I do recommend. So instead of starch, I use this right here. I just use light body magic sizing. So it's just a chemical stiffener. You can use best press. Um, but try to avoid starch if you can, because good old faultless starch, although it makes for crisp fabric, it does attract little critters. And so, yes, when you are done with all of these blocks, I will show you how to free motion quilt this thing so that you can use your domestic machine for lots of things. And so take your time and press all those seams flat. There's nothing more horrifying than to see seams going every which way. I like my seams to be flat. Look at this right there. That makes me unhappy. I'm very picky about my seams. I want my seams to lay nice and flat and I want them to go all in the direction that they go. So I do take my time, even though nobody's gonna see those seams, I'm gonna know those seams are crooked and then that is not a happy time at my house. All right. So I'm going to make sure that all of the seams go where they need to go. I'm going to lay that iron. And now I'm ready for my final row. And see, this didn't take us very long at all. It's not take us very long at all. So there we go. Voila. This block is coming right along. So I'm going to come over here. And now we're going to do our final, final row. It's going to look just like this one, but upside down. And so this is what we're going to work on. We're going to work on this row right here next. And so I'm going to take my last four and I'm gonna lay them so that they close up my, so I'm gonna lay this over here and I've got this going in to finish that diamond. And I have these going uh, with the color to the inside and color to the inside. And so this is what my block is starting to look like. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna sew this beautiful green that matches those little apples on the inside. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. If you want to leave this sash off and wait until you have made your centers and then decide on what colors you want for your sashing, you can do that as well. Um, it's no rush, it's up to you. You can make all your centers first and then pick your sashes last, or you can set aside your sashes and then uh, use whatever's left for the inside. And so now I'm gonna lay these down on top of each other, just like I did for all the other ones. And I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam on either side of those. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna leave that pattern right there for your reference so you can see what you're working on. I believe that everyone should finish their projects. There's nothing worse than having a bunch of half finished quilt tops. And so one of my goals for the Jelly Roll Club is for people to always finish their quilt tops that they start. So 
even if it takes us the rest of this year, I will work with you until you get your quilt top finished. So don't panic if you get behind. Don't panic if you miss a Sunday. I'm going to have makeup sessions, and I will also post tutorials on our YouTube channel so that you can finish your blocks without any problems. So if you can't make it on a Sunday, I don't want you to panic because there will be time for us to do uh, makeup sessions. Okay. So now I'm going to match this up yet one more time. That goes this way. I don't want to sew them the wrong way. I've come too far without Jack the Ripper. Now I have Jack the Ripper. This one is mine. Um, I try never to use him. He's got a stiletto on one side and he's got Jack the Ripper on the other, but I try not to use him because he's not my friend. So this is my guy, Jack the Ripper, the seam ripper. All right, so now I'm gonna match this up. This one is again like that other one. So it has those two little seams going the same way. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna pin that so that that intersection right there ends up being nice and accurate. So those are the only times that I pin. For the most part, 99% of the time I do not pin. And now I'm gonna sew that on my machine. My final one, again, I'm going to try to figure out before I press which way that seam is going to go. So I'm going to lay this here because this is my last one. This is not going this way. This is going this way. Be careful. I'm going to lay that on top. Then I'm going to look and I see that all of these seams are going this way, which means that this now, all of these seams will go that way. So I'll bring it back over here to my mat. And if you notice, I'm very methodical so that I don't get my pieces going the wrong way and that my seams are all going the way that they should go. Why do I press them in opposite directions? Well, that reduces the need to stop and pin. And it also increases the accuracy of those points and it reduces the bulk that you have at those intersections because now you have this fabric going this way and you have the other fabric going the other way. So when this is together and this goes together like this, then you have that fabric going opposite directions like this. And so that will nest and then all of those little points will match perfectly. And when you get to those intersections, you'll be able to see where that goes and you'll be able to hit those just the way you want. Does anybody have any questions about what we've covered? Any questions you have about the project? Things that you want to ask me or you're wondering? I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about the project. So you just ask me what you want to ask me. And now we're getting to the end of this part of the lesson. And there is my finished block center. And so I'm going to go ahead and take and press this little guy. 
and I'm going to press, 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 and I'm going to press them from the front, and I'm checking those points, and look at there. I'm very happy with how those points ended up. If I take that and I look at that, look at how exact that little point is. I didn't lose him. I didn't lose a point over here. I have a nice point on that end, and I have a perfect little point right here. So that makes me happy. That's a happy block. And so Mr. Happy is going to get pressed. If you want to set your seam, you can. You don't really have to. And I'm going to send that seam the way I want it to go. Then I'm going to come on this side and I'm going to, now I'm going to do a little extra pressing on this block from top to bottom to make sure that he is nice and flat because I want this block to be as flat as it can be. And then I'm going to give him a measure because I want to make sure that he's eight and a half inches before I put my uh, sashing on. Does anybody have any questions before we move on to sashing this little block? Anybody have any questions that they would like to ask before we move on to sashing this little block? And if your blocks look like they're not laying right, it may be because one of your seams in the back has flipped and I could feel that one. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna get that seam to lay where I want it to. Wrestling with these little guys. Ah! I sent that the wrong way. There we go. All right. We're getting there, friends. We're getting there. All right. So now I have my little block, and I have it ready to go, and he's all pressed up. And now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add, if you notice when you see the image, there is a line right here on this side and a line on the other. So I'm going to draw on that just like this. So you see this little line right here. You see this little line right there. Those are your seam lines. So whenever you add sashing, and this is true of a full-size quilt or a little tiny block, you uh, put this sashing and this sashing on first and then these two on last. And so I'm going to take my uh, block and I'm going to see how big my little block is. So I'm going to go ahead and measure and I'm going to trim my uh, sashing fabric. So I'm going to measure my block. And if I did what I'm supposed to do, oh, and it looks like I did, I have an eight and a half inch block. So if I go down this way and I look at my ruler, that's eight and a half inches. So I'm going to lay this on here. I'm going to lay my ruler down on there and I should see that block hitting the eight and a half inch line, which I see him hitting the eight and a half inch line on this side, and he is hitting the eight and a half inch on the other. And so I'm just going to rotate that again, double check it from a different direction. This is eight and a half inches. I'm going to line that up at the bottom on the left and right. And I don't have anything to trim off. This block ended up really, really um, accurate. Ooh, I have a little tiny sliver that I can chomp off of there, but this block looks pretty straight and pretty square. So there's not a whole lot of trimming I'm going to have to do except right here to nibble a tiny bit off. And so I'm just going to nibble that off, and that looks fine, and I'm going to rotate that. I'm just going to check to make sure that my block is nice and square at this point. So I'm lining it up with the eight and a half inch line, the top and at the bottom. And I see a tiny bit of scrub that I need to take off. Not much. I'm gonna close that. And so this is all that I had to trim off of my block to square it up. And so now my block is eight and a half inches. It's a little bit wompy, doesn't matter. I'm gonna give it a good hard press before um, I sew it all together, but this is ready to go. I'm gonna take my uh, strip. I'm gonna line up those selvages. I'm gonna trim those two selvage ends off. And I will 
uh, cut an eight and a half inch piece to put across the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna, I can use my mat. I can use a ruler either way. I can lay that here. Some people don't like to do that. I say there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm gonna lay this right here along that line and I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. So I know that I need to do eight and a half. This little ruler has a half mark. So I'm gonna lay it right there on that line. And so now I can cut that and this piece is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. And so now I know, straighten it up. I'm gonna cut that little eight and a half inch piece. And I'm gonna sew that on the top of this block and on the bottom. So I'm gonna sew one here and one on the opposite side. And let me raise that so you can see it. So I'm gonna sew that one at the top up here and one at the bottom down here. Now, I have this piece left, right? And so this piece, once it's sewn, if you can see, I will have enough to sew on either side. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim this off. Just should be right at the half mark right there at the fold line, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna fillet that with my scissors. And that gives me two exact pieces to fit on either side. And my block is going to be yellow and green, just like the one in this image. And so I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm gonna go ahead and sew both of those on there. So I'm gonna flip this down like I said, I don't need to pin. I've already squared up that block. It's eight and a half inches. And I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm gonna sew the top and to the bottom. If you want to, you can just stick a pin in it. You don't have to, just to hold it in place so that it doesn't fall. When you go over to your sewing machine, you don't have to. But you can put a couple pins in that and head over to the machine and come right back. If you ever have pieces that you think are not fitting, check the settings on your sewing machine because sometimes the, the settings on your sewing machine, especially the presser foot, if it's putting too much pressure against your fabric or if you're pulling on it too much when you're sewing, it can really change the size of your quilt block, sometimes by up to a fourth of an inch or more. So you always have to make sure that when you are sewing, that you're not uh, putting excessive pressure on that fabric with the presser foot or that you're not pulling it too much with your hands because that's what reduces your accuracy. And so when I pull this up, that looks good and straight on both sides. That means I did a good job um, not stretching or distorting that. And if I pull it on this side, look here, I'm off just a hair, but it's not enough to worry about. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull this here and when I sew that, I'm gonna sew with this to the top. And I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of overhang. I'm not gonna cut it out. And I'm just gonna make sure that I start sewing here. And then I will sew a quarter of an inch. And when I'm done, I'll come back and trim off the little bits at the top and at the bottom, and that's okay. And so I'm gonna lay that there on either side, making sure I center that. And then I have enough to go all the way across. And so I'm just gonna put one pin just to hold it so it doesn't fall down when I'm taking it over to the machine, not because it does anything, 
in particular. Just gonna lay that down, make sure it's nice and straight along that edge. Give her a little pin and I'm gonna head over to the machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam on either side. If this is your very first time visiting the Jelly Roll Club channel, um, we just started doing this about a month ago, so welcome. You're part of the, the founding members of the Jelly Roll Club online edition. Don't forget to get on there and like and subscribe the channel so that you get updates every time that we post a live event or there's a new class or an activity going, you'll get reminders. So if you do that, then you will know what's happening and you can stay in the loop of what we're doing in the Jelly Roll Club. Like I said, my goal is for you to always uh, have the opportunity to participate in classes. And I like to teach my classes for free. I love uh, quilting so much. I'm so passionate about quilting that I think um, it should be affordable and you should be able to do it without spending a million dollars. So and there we go. And now I will see how that's uneven. I will come back and square that up. So I'm gonna sew on the other side and um, I'll be right back. All right, friends, how are you doing out there? I see you guys are still sewing. So you're still hanging with me. guys doing is your block coming along too let me know in the chat hi Christine from Pennsylvania welcome if you are from the continental United States and you are ever in Georgetown Kentucky please let me know we meet at Birdsong Quilting which is a lovely quilt shop in Georgetown Kentucky we meet the first Saturday of the month, so if you ever want to come and join us in person, we sew the first Saturday of the month at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we sew from 10 until whenever they kick us out of the quilt shop because we love to sew. So if you're ever in the Georgetown, Kentucky area, just let me know and we will make arrangements with uh, the owner of Birdsong for us to have uh, an extended Jelly Roll Club just for you. So. Come and visit us. We're very friendly people. We don't bite. I promise. I've had my vaccine uh, at this point, my COVID vaccine. So let me know if you're interested in joining us. And we would be happy to host people um, as soon as it's safe to do so. So as soon as we're all off of these uh, crazy restrictions, then we will so, so, so until our fingers fall off. I'm okay with that. All right, so now we've gotten to the end. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just press this block, okay? How's everybody doing? Hi, Christine from Pennsylvania. Who else is with me? We have Robin, we have Lily, we have Carolyn, we have Sonia, we have Anita. All right, so let's just set that seam. This one I'm going to set first. 
I'm going to make it flat and then I'm going to roll it back and I'm pressing towards the sashing. I'm pressing towards the dark, the sashing in this case. And I'm going to go along that seam. I'm going to try to keep that seam straight. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to trim those little uh, excess that I have on the long sides of my quilt block. And I like how this is turning out. This is a sweet little print. I had to switch bobbin thread, so I'm just going to trim that. Left a little bird's nest in there. I'm not too worried about it. I'm holding that with my hand to keep it straight. I'm going to set that seam, and that makes it more accurate. I'm going to flip it back. And then I'm going to press it. Press it this way. Press it to the outside. And I'm checking to make sure that my block is good and square. And this looks pretty good. It has a tiny bit of a wobble here. So I'm just going to check my seam on the other side to make sure that I didn't go crooked. And look, yes, I did. So I went just a hair crooked. And so I'm going to come in here. And since that has a little bit of wobble, I may come back and just sew a tiny bit more where I got off kilter if I wanted to just make that perfect. But I'm not too worried about it. At this point, I can go ahead if I want to. I can add a dash of fabric sizing to my block. And I'm just going to let it uh, sit for a second. It's not wet. And I'm going to give her one more little press to make her good and crisp. And I like how she turned out. If you like how she turned up, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this live lesson with the Jelly Roll Club. Hi, from Tennessee, we have Brenda Merritt. Hi, Brenda. Uh, my name's Yvonne. And so there we have it. There's your block. And mine just needs a little bit of pressing. I want to make it nice and flat. And so I'm going to go ahead and trim that up. And I'll show you how to trim it. So I'm going to press it in the middle. If your block is not 100% perfect, I don't ever want you to panic or give up on quilting because uh, finished is better than perfect always in quilting. So finished is better than perfect. So let me show you what I've got here. I've got my block. My seams are going the opposite direction. If you notice, I have all of these seams laying nice and flat. I've got a couple things here I may want to open. Not sure. I doubt it, though. This looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim mine up. Like I said, finished is better than perfect. I have a big, gigantic ruler. And these are super handy when trimming things up. And what I will do is I will lay this so that this line goes right against there. And I'm going to find the edge of that uh, pinked edge right there, that shortest one. And so this keeps it straight. I'm going to check it this way to make sure it's good and straight and not off kilter. This line should hit on either side, the number two line. And I'm just going to take my rotary cutter, give it a nip. I'm going to rotate that block around and I'm going to do the same thing to each of those corners. I'm just going to check. I'm going to line it up right here with that line right there. Make sure that it's nice and straight so that I have a good 90 degree angle. I'm going to check to make sure this is good and straight. And then I'm going to give it a nip. And I'm going to check it and it looks like it's okay on that side. It's okay on this side. I'm going to measure my block. And my block should be 12 and a half inches. And this is a 12 and a half inch ruler. And so this is really, really close. The only thing I had to trim off my block were those two little nips. And so this is done. It's a finished 12 and a half inch block, also known as four boats at sea. And so this is block one. And you can find this image on www.jellyrollclub.com. Please let me know if you want to join us for a question and answer Zoom after this. I'm going to log off now. I will see you guys next Sunday. I'm going to post on our Facebook page a Zoom link. So I'm going to open a Zoom and I'll be on Zoom for about 15 or 20 minutes. If you guys are interested in uh, asking me questions more about this project or just to chat. Okay. 
And so it says, love it. I'm using my own stash. Please use your own stash. Um, make it scrappy. Make it yours. Make it wonderful. Join the Jelly Roll Club every Sunday night. Always free and always fun. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Love you guys. Bye-bye, friends. Bye, friends. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, friends. <laughs>